Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Headspace Podcast. What up, what up? It's your boy, HSR. It's your boy, Chris Chrome. It's episode 69. Woohoo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get into it very soon, but first, we have the housekeeping. So, we're going to start off with our only comment from last week um, our episode on fucking um, Lil Yachty's Lil Boat 2. Apparently, nobody cared what we thought. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like whatever. It's just, it didn't perform well. Sometimes the we, 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 we do some stuff and people care, and sometimes they don't. It's just, it's just the truth. But thankfully, Lindell Williams came <laughs> through. Everything was pretty much said in the review. I think he might be in a growth stage. I completely agree with you, Lindell. And he needs some more time to get a better handle on his product, 12 mil in copper and 12 mil in gold is not the same amount. Maybe just everybody agrees with us, which is why they need to comment. They're just no, like, listen, I, you, you I, all took it down properly. I honestly think that Lil Yachty is just not the in the interest scope of anyone really watching most of our stuff. I, I would imagine MERS is a little more in the scope of what people care about. Just well, I maybe. guess we're about to find out. Hopefully. Whoops, spoiler alert. Anyway. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what you think. I'm in a weird mood today. Sorry about that. Um, speaking of comments, if you do have any requests, any new albums you want to see coming, I know Mozart Mozart is excited for this as he already left us a comment. Just uh, let us know. The, the sooner you let us know in the week, the more impactful it will be in our likely na- uh, likelihood to choose your album as a review, especially for new ones. It's no. hard for us to gauge which of these new albums anyone cares about. So let us know in the comments. And speaking of, there is a request list that will be updated yeah. again soon. But in the meantime, the request list is the first version, and it's about 200 albums long of stuff people have asked for. So... We try to do those. We take it into consideration. The more votes an album gets, the harder it is to ignore it. So we want to turn this a little more de- uh, into a little more of a democracy like that. Well, not just that. <clears throat> if you go and comment, you also enter into the to the uh, contest. The grind to 1,000 <clears throat> subscribers contest. So what we're doing is trying to break 1,000 subscribers and, you know, take it to the next level. Yep. So you help us out by hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and leaving a comment about us, about the review, about something. And we'll help you out by giving you Amazon gift cards. Yeah. For so we're going to have a raffle. raffle. Basically, all the comments count as an entry. And um, the first prize will be $100 at Amazon gift money plus, sorry, gift card, plus you can request a review from us with whom you want from the channel, kind of a movie, album, whatever. And then second prize is $50, plus you get that review request. And third prize will be $25, plus the review request. And we'll get those reviews out as fast as possible once the requests are made. Don't forget USD currency. Yeah, it's all in USD currency. And for every video of ours that you like and you leave a comment on after subscribing, you get extra entries into the raffle. That's about it. I think we should move in and start talking about our album of this week. Well, since you've already said it, we are going to do MERS this week on Headspace. Um, And the album is, I have to pull it up. It's a strange journey into the unimaginable with bigger strange journey and bigger unimaginable on the (laughs) cover. Sorry, I have that in front of me. You know, got the Spotify open. Um, Basically, yeah. Tell us about Mers. How do you know them? I've talked for a while. They all like you too. <laughs> um, I've met Mers. Uh, you met him. I met Mers. I met him. Actually, like, actually met him. No, I didn't actually meet him. Oh, I'm, you got me all excited. <laughs> you got them excited too. Like, you had a good no, start. I'm Fucking like, I, I know. I I met I met his character. I met who he is as an artist on YouTube. Let me just clarify for everybody. Uh, back like two years ago, back in 2016, um, <clears throat> when I started heavily listening. Uh, to following more with Ritz. That's when I discovered Ritz as well. And then I started discovering all the strange music uh, more back then. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I saw him on the cypher. I saw him on the cypher. I don't rap fast. I'll leave that to the other guys. Right, right. <laughs> and that, that kind of sparked me because I, I kind of thought that for a while, strange was all about like the fast rapping. I know. <laughs> and then um, never really, and I'll be honest, never really decided to go into it because he wasn't a fast rapper. That that was one thing, and then we're here. Um, for me, it's a little more. Uh, I I can't say I've listened to a lot of Merz's music per se, mm-hmm. but 
I did hear him on that very say I think it's the strange ulation cipher, the one where they're on a rooftop and, and well, they it, go through the rooftop. At this point, I'm bar. still really, really in like I'm still discovering strange music at the time. And at the same time, I was kind of getting into Mayday back then. And then Mers Day came out as an album, mm-hmm. which was the collaboration. And I know I've listened to Mers Day. Like I put it A to Z back then and I don't really remember much of it, which is just because I wasn't really paying attention to music like I was back then. Um, so what I'm saying is I'm, I pay more attention now. Uh, <laughs> but really, I feel like a very different relationship with Merz. If I, honestly, when we picked the album, I forgot he was on Strange Music. For me, it was because after Justin Hunt left the breakdown, yeah. Merz has taken over doing the breakdown. So I feel, And Bonnie really actually likes Merz. She sits there and like she's the one he likes when I watch my rap shows. She likes him the best of all of them. So we go through different topics and, you know, like I feel like he's, he's one of the sources of people I actually turn to to kind of educate me a bit on the culture when well, I do watch rap news per se. And I, I look forward to his video every week. It's like between him and Justin Hunt, I feel like I got a good 30 minutes of interesting rap stuff a week to like mm-hmm. just take in. So then I saw his album was coming out and I was like, well, you know, I'm paying so much attention listening to the dude. I may as well take a look at what his music's like. And that's kind of why I was super excited to do Merz. I know Snoop Dogg had an album coming out and maybe you can let us know what album do you think we should have done? And maybe that's a new thing we can do each week so you can course correct us and we can get better but yeah i really i really i was excited to get into it i thought the the title of the album even a strange journey into the unimaginable well it's also it's, i felt like this is a, a group project as wow. well because it's also strictly like produced by michael seven summers like so he's like the exclusive <clears throat> producer to the right. album. i'm thinking he's also the dude on the album cover uh by the way it's a white album cover uh with white like, background with uh, like a, a singular photo it, it's in the corner you can see a little bit, right? Right. Now I have to take off, Chris. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'm being a shit. No, shame. it's all good. It's all good. Um, but no, and then you got like Mers under the bottom, and the, the photo of them. It's like it's just, it's Mers on the uh, on the right, and then I'm assuming seven. Michael on the left. Seven. Let's just on call the left. him seven. But um, yeah, I think this is like a group project between them, as in he's producing all the beats and he's there, and then Merz is like taking all the stuff. Right? It's like one of those type of things, like an Eric B and Rakim type shit. I do feel that there's a sense of that, like exclusively produced by him. He is the guy who made all the beats, and you, I like him. He's like I don't know how many producers are signed to Strange Music, but mm-hmm. he is definitely my favorite one of them. So for me, that was a point of coolness. Like I was excited to hear what the beats would be like on the project. And but, I also, I also kind of like Merz's look though. Like that whole like, I guess yeah. I, for me, it's just like that's what I expect. You know, it's got the hair. Right. You've got the the kind of he kind of looks like a gentle hippie. That well, you just kind of like how from with. when he started. When when I like again when we when I first stumbled onto him, he had the short hair. I don't remember that at all from the from the music video from the Strange Relation right, cipher. He had, he had short hair. I don't hair. remember that. I, I know him now as guy with yep. really long hair yep. who, no. who does the breakdown. Yeah, I, had, okay. uh, I turned around <laughs> on the breakdown one day. I was like, wait. Whoa! Like I, I. Mm. That's crazy. Um, I love the the Instagram filter photo they have. I'm I'm certain they photoshopped it, but it kind of looks like they took a photo on Ig and then proceeded to add a filter and said that's our album cover. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm certain again it was done with more work. I feel like the thing about this album cover that I find most striking is it's almost like the advertisement to like a genuine art piece, like an art gallery or something like that. Like it's not meant to be taken as a casual album per se. It's almost like he's trying to let you know, this is a magical project that he's put a whole lot of work into per se. Take it one step further. It's a, it's a movie poster. Yeah. Think of, think of like a a movie poster. Yeah. I see it. Cause I would like I, I just see him like walking walking in and then having this feeling of like okay I want to go see what these two dudes are up to what are they what are the antics what are the adventures what are the 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 experiences and things that we're gonna get out of this well it's gonna be a strange journey into and um, let's start this review with the unimaginable I wanna take my baby away I beat the case but I didn't beat the odds hey Christopher we the routine is Chris talks first so I look like less of an asshole let's go. <laughs> So uh, right off the bat, uh, we get this guitar uh, sound coming in. You can hear his. You can hear somebody playing the guitar and kind of like rumbling through the strings. Uh, really smooth though. It's not like no heavy heavy metal type thing sound there. It's very smooth, very good. Um, and then we have Merz coming in, and he's. I feel like he's questioning. 
uh, questioning how people are changing now um, that he's that he's got money, but he's also questioning like <clears throat> what what he what would it be like if things were different as well. Um, so it's it's kind of like introspective, I guess, you, if we can say that. Um, <clears throat> there wasn't much for me to actually quote, just because I felt like it was more of an introduction to the album itself. Um, kind of setting up what he's gonna, like the topics he's gonna bring up upon. Uh, we find out that he goes through a divorce. He uh, loses. He loses his son. Yeah. Um. Then he. Well, it it kind of. I felt like it was. I wasn't sure if he like fully lost it. If it was like a temporary loss of custody. Well, doesn't he? Because now I'm confused, and we'll get into that because then even throughout this song, he ends up having a new fiance, and they're having a baby boy. So like he does get another kid. So I don't. I don't well, know if that he, kid ends up kids. being stillborn. And then I think well the, that kid the, well the second kid ends up having like a uh, uh, no heart no right, heartbeat he's stillborn okay that's, that's, that means he's not alive but he didn't I, die like oh he, he didn't could, die no he no that's the whole point of it the oh, whole point of the song is shit. to keep going wrong. forward the whole point of the song is to keep going okay, forward I but this the, is where I thought the kid had died my bad but this is where I'm confused I think the kid is Mers I I don't know I, I think. Because because he references this child on multiple songs, I think this is actually what no, happened. No, his child, his child is Bishop. I'm just gonna say it right now. His... Oh, but like this other kid that he, because he references on, I, I, I might be mistaken, and if it, it is, sorry about that. But I'm fairly mm. certain that he, with the current girl he's with, they tried to have a kid, and the kid didn't make it. But that because then he has another kid with the ex-wife, and that's his actual kid. He has a kid with the ex-wife. That's the actual kid. But the the the, the new kid. I'm going to 90% assume that the kid is alive because the whole song, okay, how the whole about this? course of the song. Like, why you make it so hard? Why you even let me try? Why my marriage couldn't work? Why you let my baby die? That's just something I quoted. Right, right. I, I, I would say that it, it but was the a, cor- but my, my issue is the chorus is, the cor- for me, the chorus is talking about keep moving forward one foot at a I time. I think he's literally talking about himself. Like, he himself needs to keep moving forward one foot at a time. Okay. In light of the fact, I'm I'm pretty sure his kid was 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 born. I feel like we're just callously talking about this disrespectful. It's not what we're trying to do, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that his baby was born without a beating heart, meaning mm-hmm. it was born dead, mm-hmm. and um that was a very traumatic experience. And in the course of like, I think in the second verse, he's talking about how like. On the same day, his person got sent to jail or something like that, mm-hmm. and they walked out. His he lost custody of his kid, and it's like a context setter for the journey that we're about to go on with them. Because this album is kind of a journey through the his album. recovery. Because as I understand it, as he was going through this, his life kind of like felt kind of shitty. Because like the label literally was like, take your energy and throw it into an album and and make this project. And I think that he's trying to introduce the idea that this project is his therapy. Right. Mm. And that's the whole point of this introductory song. Like, and I really like how it starts because it's really about the idea that he's crying. Right. Like, and he's comparing it to like money and fame with the diamonds and all that. Like, what if I could ice down all my tears? Would my face be covered in diamonds from ear to ear? Would real respect me then? And then I got so many. And then he goes on, but he takes that even further and he's describing like, would I, if I had all this ice for my tears, you know, because I'm crying in public, I wouldn't have to be embarrassed anymore because I'm rich and then I can do what I want almost. And you guys would re- almost like respect me because of the diamonds and such. I feel but, like there's a sense that he doesn't feel like he's supposed to be where he is. Well, like, I, like I, he's not, he's not where he feels he's supposed to be. I feel like he was, he was dealing with a lot of depression <clears throat> and we'll get through where he explains where he's at in a couple right. of, I'm like, in like literally like the next song, <laughs> he's going to explain where he's at, you know? Mm-hmm. So. But uh, at this point, I think he's just trying to introduce the point of the project. Like he's been living his life in this sense of almost sadness, not right. sadness, as he'll say, melancholy. And he, um, he's just the chorus is just showing that that's his mantra: just keep putting one foot in front of the next, keep moving on, no matter what kind of circumstances are dealt, while giving us a little bit of the snapshot into the circumstances that are dealt. Like literally, he's like praying out to god like why you let my baby die i apologize for not you about to hear a lot this is not really music it's me dealing with my thoughts now when he says that i think mm-hmm. he's literally saying chris this holden you folk on the internet watching basically this is not your regular rap album don't right. come at me bro this is my emotional therapy 
come join the journey with me. And it was a cool preface because like for an opening track and especially something that could be almost called the title track, it um I thought it was a really good start. Um, I gave it a 4.25. I thought it was a good song. It, it's definitely like a mood song. Like you'd have to be like putting on this project, I think, to really go through and put it on. It's not like one that stands very strong without the album around it. Fair but enough. it was so... It was so good to listen to. The music video is kind of whatever. It's him just standing there, like completely like this, and like his like mouth moves, and that's all that moves. I guess it's kind of hard to do with a fucking pop filter in my face. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a really strong start. It, it and then it has robots and balloons at the end doing a little bit of a feature, and they do a little singy bit again, furthering on well, the they, idea. They, their little singy bit is like kind of emphasizing. <clears throat> The chorus, I think. Well, they're no, they're they're not even the chorus. They're emphasizing that he's that the character in this album, uh, Murs himself, and whoever else wants to relate to it, uh, has been climbing up a mountain of problems for so long. Right, and, right. Like they're finally getting over that. Like call it depression, call it anger, call it you know situation in their life. Um, I gave the song a three point nine. Uh, I think that it's it's a good song. It's a good intro song. Um. I agree with you. I guess we can call it the title track since, I mean... Well, no, it's because the word unimaginable right, is in the fucking title. Right. And he's explaining what the strange journey is going into and then... Exactly. So, um, so there's that. But I, I I don't think that it's... I don't, I don't think it's a four because it's not a song that I would go back to willingly i have to be in that mood like, no, i respect that i still think it's a great album introduction and i think in the context of the album i would give it this mark but i hear where you're coming from fair enough um but still some days we're just a little melancholy you know what i mean chris ain't never been in my shoes have my back up against the wall about to jump chris i learned the word melancholy when reading hamlet or a little condensed version of hamlet in grade six did you know what melancholy was before this song? Cause I, I learned the word melancholy about four, four hours ago. So when Murs explained it to us? No, when, 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 he, when he said it, and then I was like, dictionary.com. Yeah, that's a better answer. <laughs> um, I watched the video for this before Chris talks to us, and um, I, I noticed that, that what I, I think what I love about the video campaign is how little effort went into spending money. He just went into like his local bar and there was a band playing and he just did like this little almost open mic night performance that had a certain charm for what this song was. And I I can't say it's the most enthralling video Strange Music has put out, but I really enjoyed watching it more than some of the more high corporate monster energy drink infused videos that might come off that label anyway chris go ahead tell us stuff um it's funny you actually brought that up because i got that feeling i and i didn't uh have quite some time to watch the music videos today i was quite busy but um <clears throat> i got that feeling with that song i got it's like this He's kind of just like on a stage and he's kind of sort of crowd of like 20 or 30 people and he's just speaking. I got maybe this little feel of like a like a like an AA meeting, like a like an anger management meeting type thing like that. Mm, well, like that intro going, sets you up for that. Right. The intro. Um, but there wasn't much for me to actually. Careful. Careful. My Don't bad. attack my equipment. Go Sorry, on. It's bad. fine. Go on. Um, <clears throat> I didn't I didn't really find any like much much to quote just because it was very. It was very direct. Like there was, it wasn't like complex. It wasn't anything trickery. Um, he starts off. Uh, they say that happiness is a choice. Well, I guess they get to choose. Uh, put it's put power. all of them so-called friends with that fake ass friends ain't never been in my shoes. Power. And right away, like you don't even need to. You don't need to interpret anything or whatnot. He's clearly dealing with something. But you he's can clearly... relate. That's what he's going for. Pardon? Hey, yo, sorry if you hear some beeping. We have some snow removal happening up in Montreal. That's what's up. So yep. we'll keep going. Sorry about the yep. noise. Um, so clearly he's dealing with something, and he's and you can you can think it's depression. You can think it's you know pain, obviously. Uh, but the rest of the song is is more just how he kind of goes throughout his days dealing with these certain experiences and dealing with these certain feelings. Um, it's a really great, it's a really good song, really great catchy hook, catchy chorus. Um, but there's something with this vibe that I'm not really feeling. Um, I like what I like where it's going. 
I like where where we're we're going so far, but the vibe itself feels a little off for me. But I did give it a four. The song is a single. It was a single. It was released uh, before the album came out, and it, it it's good. That's fair. I had a particularly weird week that left me feeling kind of melancholy myself, so I suppose I was in the right frame of mind for this album. To keep that in mind with my grades, I am in a weird melancholy state. Um, so yeah, like Wes Chris was saying, it starts off with that little speech, and then it goes into that little part that Chris said. Um, but then I really like, like, have my back up against the wall, about to jump off the edge, just pay for the shrink, but she made me think that the problem's on my head. Often when you do try to get help or deal with situations, people will just kind of look back at you and be like, here's what you need to do to fix it. Here's your problems. And it's all about that stuff when Mm -hmm. sometimes it really is just that the environment creates some bad news bear situations. Um, I don't know. So with that said, he goes solo on his own, trying to face my fears. I stopped, popped a pill, and it all got real. So I started writing this right here. And I almost get the sense that, like, this this song is fresh off this epiphany of what this project's going to be, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it was the, the lead single to the album, um, you know? And it took me years to get to this point where I don't want to die every day. And you can't put it in your mind to be down all the time because the sunshine, uh, the sun go shine anyway i realized i I basically just read like the the whole verse but um it was really like meaningful to me at least it was kind of like you know seeing where mers is now at least and maybe not understanding his full history but to hear him come out and just be like the rapper that's kind of like hey i'm I'm, you know bad stuff happens in my life and i just get through it Mm -hmm. it's kind of like all right and then you have that chorus that like makes you kind of like fucking um like, just want to truck on and keep going, no matter how bad your day is. Um, right. And I like the don't make to don't mean to make you feel bad because you think that I'm sad. No need for you to feel sorry, bro. I'm just melancholy. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. Oftentimes people think that there's something they can do or my unhappy days are infectious and such. So I get where he's coming from. It's just kind of like, yeah, that's not in it. I don't have it in me today to be like the super energetic, awesome person y'all want me to be. And I, I respect that. Um, one more thing I thought was really fun for me, and it's just because it's a, it's a fun little twist on a, a common saying, but mm. everybody got their ideas on how to make my pain go away, but opinions is just like a SoundCloud page. Everybody got one these days. And I was like, oof, that's, yeah. a, that's a little stinger there. But I thought that was a very clever one. All that to say, between the somber beat that really kind of captures the essence of melancholy in music. So like, I like the fact that they're playing with instruments and they're not really trying to go with this heavy trap sound. It's almost like a little break from that, which is nice. And, uh, I give this a 4.7. This, this, this got me in the feels. This was like, this was a really cool song, you know, but I guess we're going to move on and hear about how he's from Midtown. Real niggas from doing what they gotta do. My homies like to trip, talk shit and wear a lot. Okay, Midtown is where he's from. So, uh, like Holden just said, he's basically uh, explaining where he's from. He's coming down and letting us know how it goes in his hood. Um, We found out here that he's actually connected. Uh, Can't stop a real from doing what they got to do. My homies like to trip, talk shit, and wear a lot of blue. I like the way he said that. It was really nice and smooth. Uh, But I'm also assuming he knows the Crips. That gang, that gang well, over there. At some point, he mentions Nipsey on the album. Mr. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. We uh, we talked about Nipsey at some point, right? I think it was like what three weeks ago. Yeah, I'm gonna go on. So, um, so clearly he's connected. But uh, other than that, I like that there. I like the piano rift part of the song. I like the synthy sound that's giving off like this trumpet jazzy feel vibe to it. Um, I like the outro to the song because that's where I really felt like really tied everything together the song itself is basically just Murs explaining what his, his movements are in his area how he kind of grew up in his hood uh what it's like and his experiences and his environment but what what they're tying it to is to stop violence and stop having like these stop having people die and 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 he states it here and Murray states it here that he's really all about peace and love and that even though the beat right now is gangster as hell that he, he he's never had to been gangster. He just he wants to just do what he needs he wants to do and make music that allows you to enjoy it, but also have this like peace and positivity to it. I thought it was really great. I gave it a four on five. 
Yeah, I like this one too. Um, I like how he's uh, he's uh, he like Mexicans and no, I've been letting no screaming Cloverdale before I let the trigger go. Um, but I let the trigger go. Fuck being a criminal. Still rolling with some shysty hustling individuals. Bend the law till it almost break, man. Y'all always ten deep. Y- y'all so fake. And I was like, because the man y'all ten deep is kind of like a, another voice he adopts for the line to be like somebody else. And I thought that was really fun. Like he's kind of letting you know he's got his street credibility and that he actually comes from an environment that, that reps something. He's got some hood behind him. He's got something there, which is really a good place thing because he's been so sensitive in the last two tracks. It's kind of like whatever. And then he's like, no, 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 don't forget. I got some cool stuff going in, you know. Right. I also like when he's like, one of my roles is push their way through the cracks, y'all. That's what Pac said. Yeah, that's what Pac said. Pearson police tried to kill me. I'm not dead. Before the grace of God, there go I. That means I could have been any of the homies that died. And I was like, whoa, wait, wait. So basically, he's kind of like listening to the music and stuff and kind of realizing that in, in this system and where he's at, it's it was just almost random chance that he got through by other people. And he puts that humility and shit into God. And he's like, God, about the most time, so far from worthless to survive. I am present with a purpose, if only to make you nervous and challenge the status quo. I've done my service. And it's almost like this dude's a role model of sorts. Like he's, he's like recognizing that there is this need for somebody to come in here and, and, and show this appreciation for the fact that he survived circumstances that he should not necessarily have survived. And uh, he wants to make you nervous. He wants to challenge your perceptions of the world, of what hip hop is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. He's listening to what's going on and he's choosing to put out this honest and raw material to kind of almost give you something different to listen to and to really get into. Um, but I really like in the outro the way he was like, so y'all don't got to f- fuck with them over there, but don't fuck with them over there. And just like he's got this such a good like grasp of, of the art of hip hop and mm-hmm. to see it in play. And Seven is an excellent producer. He is one of those guys that manages to kind of chop up the beat the way Chep Ni- Tech Nine chops up a flow. So you, you kind of have this ever evolving musical experience that really is complemented by the seriousness of what uh Murs goes on to say and uh honestly i really dug this one john Givis gives a little bit of vocal assistance just to say his name and make sure it's it's you know not forgotten and uh this track was a four and a half on five to me i was i was really feeling it that beat is pretty gangster is all i'm trying to say nice and it's the uh same way featuring technoid Crazy world, I'm that square peg in the round hole. I know what your family's saying. Please tell us about this track. Well, um, right off the bat, I do like the beat. I like, uh, I like how it's 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 got this like this like lovey type vibe to it, but it's also got this like hip hop vibe to it as well. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but I did feel like there was a lot happening on the verses parts of the beat, and then there was not enough happening on the chorus parts. Um, I felt like. Murs did great on the verses. Um, he knows how to control the beat. He knows how to go in and, 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 and make sure that everything sounds on point. But I just felt like the, the weird chimes and the weird, like, do, 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 that would, that would keep popping up randomly over the, the properly synchronized drums was just a little bit off for me. But that that's just my opinion. Um, I like when... I like when Martin Murs was like, close your ears to the nonsense. This is our channel. We're creating all the content and they can leave their comments underneath. But best believe it's problem when I see them in the streets. Now, I'm, it's at this point I started thinking, I was like, is this about a girl or is this about the label or is this just about haters? Be- it's, it's about a girl. It's about like he's dating a girl and the girl's family and friends and everybody doesn't like him. And like right. in the music video, they really drive that point home. Okay, so that's one of those videos that music video actually ties into what he's saying. Oh yeah, like 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 kind of hones in on the sister, and it goes shady sister as he's rapping about how she wants, and she's all like, and like trying to like you know get all up on that, and then anyway, mm-hmm. we'll talk about that a bit more after. Okay, uh, and then on the third verse we got Tech Nine, and I was very pleased on how he presented the verse. I was very pleased on how he did his thing, 
but it was basically just nobody represented strange and people change when you get to this type of success and and fame just changes you and it's it's it was basically just another verse off of tech nine planet i feel uh just different in tone different in pitch so i was like all right the way he did it was great but but the lyrics were just okay um, but all, overall, the song itself is uh, a single. It is a good song to jam out to a little bit. If you want to have like this, this like kind of funky, positive, romantic mood, it's great. Four on five. Yeah, um, I definitely caught the part where I was about a girl right away because I've been that boyfriend who's been dating the girl whose parents didn't feel him and the family and friends were like break up with him and all that stuff. Maybe I deserved it. Maybe I didn't. But I understand uh, where Merce is coming from at the beginning. Like, And he, he's pretty straight up. Like, I got a thing for you, baby girl, but I don't seem to fit up in your crazy world. Now I come from a certain side of the tracks, and I've dated a couple of girls that were from a certain other side of the tracks. And uh, in, in a good way to put it would be I was that square peg in a round hole. And I know what your family's saying on the low, and all your homegirls high-key hate me, though. So like, I, I know what he's like. And I know what that, that feels like, at least. Um, and then they, they use him for his social media connects or Amazon and Netflix and bullshit. And he's like, I don't even know why you listen to these broke chicks. And on that last line, like, I he kind of had me rooting for him. And then I was a little bit like, that's a little petty. But I get it. He's, he's allowed to be petty. It's okay. I've been there. I felt that. But up until that line, I was totally with him 100%. Um close your eyes to the nonsense you know that shit chris just said and uh yeah i uh, i really like that part too mostly because he is a youtube creator now so mm. this is probably something that's really connected to his life and i thought it was just almost a cute little like promoting on his channel kind of thing um and when you treat them with respect they treat you horrible when i was given all i gave up it was adorable now when i see you i want to give a bitch a morsel threaten my life on the phone taking that gang spray how come my homie's looking forward to having a bang day okay it was more like how tech said this than what tech said that i really enjoyed mm -hmm. all this hating when i was young until i became great telling you people not to feel me i feel the same way fuck y'all and like i know that uh Merz wants to take out her brother and like it's kind of got this whole story of like fuck your family fuck them all tell them i don't care if they don't like me blah you i know. got it I, well, he's like basically saying, I feel the same way they do. They don't like me, fuck them. I, don't, I feel the same way. You know, that was how I took this track. Absolutely. For a sight, for a slight second, I was just like, what if it's like deeper than that? And he. I mean, like, yeah. your brother wants to fight me. I feel the same way. I want to fight myself. You know? I mean, like, that could be a thing. But I don't really feel like playing mental gymnastics looking for superly <laughs> hidden meetings and metaphors. This isn't uh, some Illuminati breakdown. Right. I right. was just taking the man for what he said after telling me it would be a personal journey through the turmoil of his life. So I gave it a four and a half on five. I think it had a great energy. And uh, in the music video, it's fucking ridiculous. He's like sitting there at the family's dinner. And I'm like wondering if Tech Nine's going to show up in the video the whole time because in another video, one of the featured people doesn't show up but um basically tech nine bust into the room and then the daughter's like okay i don't need to fuck mers i'll fuck tech like the other daughter and then like tech's just kind of rapping out his verse while like randomly in this fucking family's living room rescuing mers and then mers comes up they give off fingers and then tech comes back and grabs this girl's little sister who looked really young and um in light of what he said on Planet about that Ooh Ariola's track, I was like, Tech, you're not helping your case here, bud. You're just not helping your case. At the end of the day, though, I thought it was hilarious. I gave it a four and a half. There was parts of this song I felt were a little, little too petty for my liking. Right. But in general, I got where he was coming from and thought it was pretty enjoyable. Um, what'd you give it? I gave it a four, but I guess you didn't think it was powerful. Mm, you didn't. Fed up and focus, I was ready to fight the power with flavor, flavor, car written now emerge my Chris has a whole lot to say about power. I do, I do. I like this. Right off the bat, right off the bat, I like the old school boom bap sound, the digital flute, the drums. I like the production on this right away. It is great. Um, then we get on to verse one and it start and one of the lines I like is reading books by the Panthers, building up my rage at 14. Building my rage at age 14, 
Rest soul on ice. Spook who sat by the door read that joint twice. Ice Cube, Brother J, and Ice T. These are the professors that would set my mind free. Fuck the police and the Easton cop killer. There were my textbooks, so if it was not thriller, that pop music was filler. No disrespect to Mike, but I as fe- but I am fed up and focused as I was ready to fight. Power. And I apologize for butchering that entire thing. But all of that made me like realize that Mers went back and, and quoted um, <clears throat> books that he used to read. Um, for example, uh, Spook, who, da, who, da, who Sat by the Door. That's a book. Um, and it, it's, it's about like a, a black man who uh, imposes as um, Uncle Sam and tries to start an American revolution. Right. And it made me kind of think like, He's he's basically talking about how he wants to make a change, but there isn't there isn't like change happening in the music nowadays. Everybody's not on that change tip. Everybody's trying to make mm. music on on for money for other reasons or stuff like that. Um, I like when he said like you know Ice Cube, Brother J, and Ice T. Well, as we as we learned, Ice T uh, was like one of the ra- first rappers to become like a gangster rapper. Right. Like in in that time, and then Ice Cube, well, with N.W.A. and everybody else, and even on his own, he changed the rap game as well. Um, and we've never really looked at Brother J yet. I'm I'm assuming we might end up doing him on Classic Quest, but um, I'm assuming in terms of who the other two rappers are, he probably also made a change as well. And I think that's what Mar- Mers is trying to drive home. Um, yeah, I like how he did the play on word with "fuck the police" while he referenced Ice Cube. NWA reference. That's also that was also a revolutionary song as well, um, and it was just and it was just nice to 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 see his his level of knowledge and 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 to really bring that out right. In verse two, I like I like when he goes. Radio once meant relevancy. Now irrelevant. It's all about the playlist. The playing field is leveling. If you got better ideas than I am, Edison, electrifying and defying true music, medicine. And for a moment, I, I was just like, that is that is really hard because it, it's true. At one moment, you had to be on the radio. Now it now radio is dying. And to acknowledge the fact that like radio Literally, itself, we were just watching a video about how iHeartRadio has declared bankruptcy. Right? Um, now as radio is dying, people are looking at streams and, and uh, plays and all this stuff. I mean, there was a big news. There was a big news thing between Drake and some YouTuber right now playing Fortnite together. They got... 600,000 views on Twitch, right? which doubled the previous record of most people on Twitch. Absolutely. So nowadays we can start, we're starting to see the change in how people are being graded and what, and what's coming out there. And again, he brings this back to like people nowadays that are making music. They're not, they're being streamed, but their music they're making isn't what I guess what he feels isn't like worth making it for. Right. Um, and then, uh, hold on, give me a second. Okay. I feel like Mer- I feel like Mers wants to bring it back to the old school type messages, back to like when there was actually a moral to the story. There was actually a reason to spit about it. It wasn't just about money, drugs, or just whatever it is now. I I honestly felt so much power in this song and 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 the way that he just carried himself through and dropping all these references throughout hip hop and all of these names. It was fantastic. I gave it a four point five on five. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, the hook alone, facts is facts and fact is whack is whack. Nowadays, they need to let the rappers rap. Facts is facts and the fact is trap is trap. Whip that work, but let the rappers rap. And then he goes on with like a different version of that. And I really liked it because he's like, he kind of like goes in, follows up with like, we all know you got stacks. That's cool. And it almost like, I guess one of the feelings is if you like were to take Amigos, which he, he did make that line about bags at some point. Um that from a content perspective i mean they're they're a living meme of repetition they say the same thing whatever you've heard on one migo song there's a good chance you heard on all migo songs maybe not literally all but that's kind of where he's coming from but like 
at the the cost of like real rappers having a lane to come in and be rap i think what he's trying to do is is draw a divide like give rap back to the rappers and go do your own thing over there mm -hmm. which is silly because it would still be the same thing people still wouldn't listen to real rap to the level that he would like but right because i mean my only real comment is the issue is not that there aren't real rappers rapping they're fucking everywhere we just did like a nipsey hustle on a side high the prince and all that other shit it's that at the end of the day, we're not buying those records. We're not pushing those albums to the front of Billboard the way that, say, Amigos has a fan base that is pushing them to the front. Or of, Little uh, Uzi or Yachty or... Or whoever else. So these guys that are charting and stuff, the blame falls less on the artists and on the marketers, but more on us by not doing it. Like, that's just facts. I mean, we can argue about that all day, but if we want to see hip hop go to a certain place, we, the older people, need to go invest in it like we were younger kids again and watch how we change the chart, show there's money in older people, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, so that, that was a cool line of reasoning and thinking that I got out of it. You said a lot of great stuff. Um, I like how he just starts it. I stand for the flag and stand for my people. And in this day and age, it's important to then state this is not a contradiction. He's not a fan of evil, but most of these rappers as evil as these politicians flexing on their own folk who ain't even got a pot to piss in. Mm. And that's pretty good because he's kind of pointing out how he is about the truth and he, he's kind of patriotic and stuff, but the way he looks around is hip hop and these rappers, they're not that different than the politicians and the criticisms that might be given to them and the way that they flex on the, po the poor. And it is something that I've always found interesting how... If you have money, how do you just go up to people who don't and floss it like that? Okay, cool, you're trying to prove you're good. But if you don't have money, why do you praise people who are saying I'm fucking better than you? It's just whack. To me, that's always been a weird motivation point. But anyway, still, they love it on the bad guy. I try to be the hero. My people tell me to stand by. And I like that. I like how he, he, in light of everything, in light of the fact that everyone still seems to love the villain, his choice in this world is to be a hero, and that's inspiring to me because yes. if there's nothing else about this album, it is an inspiring thing to listen to. Um, then you have Propaganda at the end who does this almost spoken word bit, and I just love the way he starts it. Like We live in this odd paradox, right? This juxtap juxtaposition of knowing too much and not enough. I got facts to quote you. You don't know when to shut up when you can't un understand. I was like, doop. And then he kind of points out, like, how do you mean anything if you have like one tenth the fan base of my man? And I'm like, interesting points, right? Like, it's kind of like, he's just kind of like showing how at the end of the day, like, people like to talk a lot. And I guess this is just a fancy way of saying studio gangster, as we had discussed on, a, on the, the Classic West last week, asking about who the studio gangsters were. But this is another way to look at that. I like that he stands by the power of purity. I gave this song a four and a half on five. I thought it was really fun to listen to. Nice. Um, next up, we do have those G lollipops. Chris, tell us all the lovely things you have to say about G lollipops featuring Prof and Fashan. But okay, sorry, where was Fashan in the music video? Because in the music video, Murs did a whole second verse that I didn't actually review but listen to. And he ends it by saying, don't trust the uh, chick who doesn't suck dick. And I was like, that, that was what stuck with me from the music video, Murs saying that. Um, in light of this album, I thought it was just an interesting way that Murs ended that second verse. That didn't make it onto the album. But Sean wasn't there. Anyway, go on, Chris. What do you have to say about this? Um, I This is a single off the album. Um, I don't really like it. Um, I think that I, I don't like it because it's basically just what he said in the last song, but just more hype. That's all it really is. He's basically just being more flaw, flexy, more gangster, more in your face, more kind of like savage, rugged on this one with very, very dope bars and two other features basically saying that we have more money. We're partying and blah, blah, blah. Mm, I think and, it was ironic. What do you mean? I think they were all trying to be ironic. Okay. I mean, I might be wrong about that. They might be like whatever, but I got this sense of they're almost making fun of the culture because the song's called G Lollipops, right? Fair enough. Like right off the jump. And, and I mean, look at – let's just take a quick look at Prof's part. And this is where it kind of clicked a little bit because he starts in and he's like this guy and he just sounds so swagged out. I'm like, this sounds so weird for this album, right? Like just mm – -hmm. like He sounds like he's mumbling. 
And he's like, as far as I'm concerned, I don't fuck with the list price. Rappers these days ain't been a fist fight. That's actually a good point. You never know, homie. I could be a fraud. The atheist chick I'm fucking, she treat me like a god. I'm popping pills all day in the VIP. I'm an industry plant. I'm just playing the long game. And I get the sense that... Hold up, hold up. Bitch never wrote a rhyme in my life, and after the club, I'm going to break your wife's hymen tonight. But my point is, is if you really think about what he's saying there, it's a little bit more of an ironic criticism, a little bit of a taking shots at the industry that that line yes i'll give you that but i feel like the whole song is in that same vein of things it's not like it's this different experience it's just kind of that from each of these guys perspectives now Mm. i got nothing to quote from mers off of this because he was pretty fly and he was pretty cool i got something um i like when mers goes playing war games with four dames in your name, uh, don't get high, stay fly. He's or holding a Nintendo name, 64. A dairy, but it gets scarier. Hey. Hold, on, hold on. As he's saying that, he's holding a Nintendo 64 remote by himself in a room with no dames around in the video. I was like, okay. I mean, I guess that's why I think it's ironic. Like, he's making fun of these people, you know, a little bit. That's what I'm taking from it. Go Fair on. enough. Well, that, that was it. I mean, then, then you try to test the best in your area. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Um, what about Fashan? I like this guy. I like the way he comes in. Okay, I gave her a cavity. You hate that it had to be. Regal Rhyme Sayer, Mr. Laver, your majesty. Let him my nuts hang like Tiffany had his weed. While y'all toss salad, anything for a salary. How is this not a criticism and an iron attack? Just to follow up, just to follow up, you call it a triumph, I call it a tragedy. Casually, I turn competition into casualties. So yeah, basically what they're trying to point out is through their lyricism that like these guys are chumps and uh, but like again again i understand that kind of like chloroseptic like by eminem exactly but i find like they did it i find like mers did it better on the last track because on the last but track were... he what well, he, he 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 i feel like he put them to shame like he name dropped well, artists he put he but they're, they're, they're on different like, but they're not even the same thing to me they're apples and oranges so in the last like song, the songs you mean yeah yeah so in the last track he was kind of the high and mighty self-righteous dude and here he's kind of proven he can have swag too so it's almost like a, a, a relevant way to like back up the point like how could he just do that last song without proving at least he could okay. be kind of hype in the mint time okay I mean, so it's, it's that i think it's that what was that i don't know i, I yeah. gave it a four and a half i love the beat i love the like there's the fucking lollipops little line he says in the middle between verses like it almost felt so ridiculous and cute in a sense i think that's where the shots are taken i think he's calling all the new age rappers lollipops like the way they dress look and act. i and- think uh, well I think he's just kind of pointing out in their efforts too. It's as silly as if he made a song called G Lollipops. Not as silly as what's about to come. I gave it a three point nine, by the way. Um, yeah, and just to go on, we I guess we can talk about like his kid's experience with a superhero <laughs> pool party. Buying vinyl, but cassettes ain't coming back. Speaking of comebacks, I just saw Voltron rolling with the. Be said, you're either gonna love or hate this track. <laughs> so I love this track. Um, <laughs> There is no story to this song. There, like, okay, there is a story. The story is, is that he has a party and there's superheroes and all your favorite superheroes and old cartoon characters come back to life and you're like, oh my god, yay! But there's not actually a real story to this. Well, so, the story is he had a pool party. This is what went down at his pool party. Yes, but like, it's like it's a highlight not, reel. It, it's like a highlight reel for his child that he's get before bedtime. This isn't it, for his child. Yes, it is. I think that part's a joke because the whole song's pretty fucking X-rated. Well, let's just. Well, yeah. I think it was a joke. I I mean, he also he he also the kids like I like Spider Man and Black Panther. Fuck them. They're not invited. Yeah, you know, like I think he was (laughs) just having some fun, a little goof stare. Like he says, "Fuck," his kid giggles, But, but like. Anyway, um, I think he's a geek, as I know from watching the show, of course. That, and that he's just having some fun. Because basically what he does is almost every line references some superhero well, and has a couple of puns attached to it. So feel free to uh, quote a couple. I've got three different things from all three different verses. All right. So verse one, su- just as he goes in, Superman just broke the diving board. Rugrats fighting with that baby from the oh, dinosaur. It's, it's not amazing. the mama. Not the mama. Hook brought the drama. Because Rufio and Lost Boys fucking up some commas. Back to the future, Marty and Doc, Doc Brown. Brown. Causing, cursing Kanye because he brought the Nike like stock down. down. Okay, I just want to pick apart that for a second. First of all, I really like the fact that he made a reference to the Rugrats fighting uh, Reptar, Reptar, 
but uses no, no, no. It's no hold on uh, hold on hold on rugrats are fighting reptar initially in the rugrats tv show or the movie yeah, I know but that. he uses the dinosaur baby from the show dinosaurs to impose as reptar and put them in that scenario well uh, i think that yes maybe he was inspired by that but reptar's not here this is the hero party because reptar's with the bar at the villains downtown so this is them kind of not sure oh this is literally they were fighting with the baby dino from, from dinosaurs. The dinosaur show. Oh my god! I thought. See, look at me making because this is like how the story plays. So you got to picture it. This is like you went to this guy's superhero party, and like it's like, yo, check out the Snapchat reel of my party, and this is the Snapchat okay. reel of his party. Okay. Um, in verse two, I liked when he started off and goes. Wonder Woman rolled up with her girl Jean Grey with some shitty ass bean dip Frito Lay. She Hulk saved the day with some bomb guacamole, same color as her skin with a plate of ravioli. And, and then it, the Flash it, it, comes and eats it right <laughs> quick. And, then, and once Flash eats it right quick, Iron Man's pissed because he's somewhat of a foodie. Like it's all of these <laughs> just weird quirky things. I liked. I, I didn't quote the actual line, but this is what's funny. Of course, of course, Hulk and Thor are fighting. Nothing, uh, nothing Hawk was good. in the front yard fucking with Thor. Good thing I hired Wolverine to work on the door. I told right. them both to shut the fuck up, come in and have some cut cage. Just one night without fights for fuck's sake. Like right. what I'm loving about this is that these superheroes seem to be as charged and lit as the villains are. And like they can't even turn it off for a night. They have a little bit of aggression. They, but they I have feel their like, own beefs. I feel like and everybody's a little bit drunk. If you want to take a second to think about it. It could be like his squad, which are all the heroes. Like if you think about it that easy, uh, and then this like, sounds like a Chris Rabbit hole to me. <laughs> well, I just I just think like maybe this is like his way of expressing how he sees the world in terms of the industry, in terms of like the villains in the industry. I've heard a lot of songs that are like this. This isn't even an original idea. I mean, fucking Ray William Johnson basically had villains at a bar, and it's basically this. It, I mean, it might even be that he's referencing the Ray Williams Johnson with your favorite Martians uh, song directly about Fair enough. it's like the villain disco or something like that. So that's the first thing that I pictured is this is definitely not the first time I've heard this song. Um, and um, just to quote my last thing for verse three, I told Batman no capes in the pool and Catwoman tried to steal all my infinity jewels. Look. Jewels, gems, I really don't give a fuck. Professor X fell off his wheelchair and nobody picked him up. Oh, that's and my least favorite part of the song. I just feel bad. I was like, yo, pick pick up Professor X. Professor like, X has fucking mind powers. Yeah, like... Ugh. Anyway, four on five. Up. Four on five. I also gave this a four on five. Um, Like I said, you're either going to love or hate this song. I love the creativity that went into the idea uh, if it is really a nod to your favorite Martian, I appreciate that. If it's a nod to something else that I don't know about, I'd love to hear the original source of this idea. Um, if you guys have listened to your favorite Martian, recently I was learning a little bit about what happened to Ray Ray over the last couple of years. Um, anyway, let us know what you feel about all that. And uh, do you like whiskey and Patron? She see me on the TV. <laughs> Rap Karma 101. She tried to play me out. So um, this is... An okay song. Um, I, I don't really particularly like the beat. It was a little bit offsetting for me. Um, it had like these weird aluminum can sounds kind of hits that kind of kept coming back. I sounds was... like your freaking record player is skipping right off the jump. Like it, it literally pauses like that. Like it felt like it was skipping. Right. Um, and what I got from this was just they're, they're dealing with issues and the way that they deal with issues is by drinking and they don't want to take care of it. First verse, I got that there is a, there's a problem with a girl. Um, there, I didn't really quote much. It, it the song for me was actually pretty That's because boring. The lyrics were not genius. Um, but the first verse we've got something wrong with a girl and there's issues happening and he doesn't want to deal with her so he he kind of just leaves and then puts his phone on airplane mode and starts drinking and has a good old night second verse i feel like there's issues with the girl and the friends now and he still doesn't want to deal with it so he goes and gets drunk and you know does the same thing and then on verse three xv uh from what i understand uh, his perspective is that money changes people 
and that fame changes people and that he's trying to he's in the middle of dealing with that with the girl that he's kind of seeing good good talent just not a good song 3.5 um, I don't think the song was bad. I kind of get where he's coming from. I mean, I, li- I like how it starts. Fuck bleep. I never liked them. I don't care if I see them. I'd have to fight them. Fuck it. They fell off, so I'm going to bleep them out, which he did. Used to be the ones. Now they the ones nobody speak about. Funny how this rap game will change you. Hoping uh, hoping you coming at people from the wrong angles. It's, uh, having you. Sorry, having you. Anyway, he goes on from there, and it really kind of has this, like, He's stressed and blah, blah, blah. You feel it building up. And then it's supposed to be like this laid back. I'm like, I hated the part where he's like, I know I'm mixing liquors, but they're both brown. And then our skins are brown and stuff. And like, maybe I'm not supposed to hate that part. But I just felt like this song was a little bit reaching into an area of of boring. Now, I don't know. I just, I I had a lot of trouble, like caring about this one because he had me in such a certain place with the rest of this album right and after a superhero pool party i suppose you would want some alcohol because it kind of sounds like there's a lot of violence there but i don't know this beat felt a little bit not as fun the chorus didn't really sit right with me and maybe after a little bit or maybe in the right vibe i could really dig this track but i gave it a 3.75 i can see that it's not bad by any way um, I just didn't feel it. So anyway, let's move on to Aline's story. MC, and he was still free at the time. I was on tour with the. So this is when I started to try to edit lyrics because I was frustrated that they weren't complete. And then I discovered I was editing the lyrics to this song on Genius at the same time as as somebody else. I am quite proud of of adding. He came back with a baby food jar. That was me. I put those words off a genius page. Okay, go on, Chris. Tell us about the song. I am, I'm really proud of you, Holden. I'm glad that you got to write it out and put your knowledge. No, no, no we're not. We're not quite there yet. Did, did, I, you get, only, did you get a plus five? Or no, a no, plus no, 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 no. I just dabbled here. Somebody else had started. <laughs> we'll talk about how genius gives up points soon. Um, this this song, this song. I I don't like this song either. Um, I like. I like the storytelling and the experiences that are explained uh, when you do sip lean, or at least when he has sipped lean. But I don't really like the way it was it was made. I don't like the I don't like this this like ear. It, it's got this eerie sound to it, which I understand. It's supposed to kind of like make you don't do lean. This is bad. These are dumb shit that happens when you drink lean. But at the same time, it's like. It 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 doesn't it doesn't I didn't get that stick at all. with me. I don't know. That's what that's what I got. I, from I it. just thought this was a story for the guy. He was like, honestly, I, I picture him thinking back to his first time doing lean, and uh, he, he well, it's he, not just his first time. There's multiple times no, no, he was no, chilling this with is the literally, lean dealer. But this is literally his first time doing lean. He's telling the us first, about the first. He starts off with the first time, but then there's this whole story. Yeah, but the whole story is one night. Oh, I gave it three point nine. Yes, he does go back and buy more lean. And because anyway, so he um, he's kind of describing why he wants lean. So uh, met this dude said he's from the north side, said he knew a spot where he could give me a ride. Didn't think twice. He said he was a fan and I would do anything to get up out the van. 15 seater. We was rolling 10 deep and I was sitting bitch. So I couldn't get sleep. So he's in the middle. I heard codeine was the thing to make you pass out, got to the spot, and he told me to pull the cash out, blah, blah, blah. He gave him 40 bucks, came back with a baby food jar full of some shit, and then they discussed how they mix it and stuff. But really, he, he'd already heard about lean because of Pimp C and uh, a bit of that Southern culture, so he was not so ignorant to what it was. He didn't try it, and really, he was just he just wanted to sleep. So he got all faded, and then they bought a jar. Then he went and performed that night. And then a fight breaks out, and then the guy who went and bought the lean with him knocks out the perpetrator who who, who was like, so somebody scuffed his shoe, and that's what the, that caused the fight. And then the guy who got the lean with him knocked out the person and basically saved him. So they went back, and they bought a lot more lean because we then headed back to the spot. We copped another. This time we bought a pipe because I owed him that. When people show you love, you always show it back. So... That's, I feel like, what the moral of the story is. This crazy night happened, and he um, he he rewarded the person who helped him and then described his first night doing lean. And I was like, okay. this 
is just not what I was expecting on this album. Um, it is a really interesting and detailed story. I think um, Mers has quite a good grasp of the English language and how to communicate ideas with a certain degree of eloquence. On the other hand, I just listened to this story about how he did Lean for the first time. And when the story ends, I feel like my life was so non-impacted by this. It was it was just so irrelevant while being interesting, mildly interesting. I give it a four. It's a good song. It's just, why? That was so strange, you know? Anyway, I don't know what you gave it. I gave it a 3.9. All right, cool. It's a lo-fi score. It's a lo-fi night. Pain. I grew up on the Bible, but I don't want to lie. So I came across this one, and um, somebody had um, written out, let's just say, uh, the first line of the Genius page and nothing else. So your boy filled out the rest of the Genius page on this one. That's right. I filled out the lyrics. If they're bad or anything, it was me that fucked them up. That's right. Genius lyrics on this track and a couple others. But I didn't start it, so we'll talk about the points after. Go on, Chris. I'm I'm more interested in what you have to say. I don't have much to say about this. Yeah, because he didn't write out the lyrics of the song. <laughs> like, um, um, I understand that Murs is having one of those nights. Uh, he's kind of expressing that he's dealing with struggle. Uh, he's got different problems that are happening, and due to these problems, he feels like he just kind of wants to be on his own, be secluded. Um, I feel like he's also trying to reach out to other people that kind of feel like this, um, that like he, he, he understands where they're coming from. He understands what that's like. Um, I like the wordplay on lo-fi, kind of like hi-fi where you're supposed to be like wilding out and on this hyper vibe. That was, that was, uh, cute a little bit. Um, but other than that, uh, the only th real thing that stuck with me was, uh, so you take 10 paces, then turn around and shoot all your fears in the faces. Oof. And that's uh, that I really liked because it shows that you can't you, you, you can't let whatever's stopping you stop you. You have to keep going. But at the same time, eventually you have to let it go and you need to, like, put it to rest. And if it's shooting it, it's shooting it. If it's like, you know, burying it, digging your grave or whatever, burying it and you do it. But you have to eventually let it go. And that was very powerful to me. Um, I gave the song a four on five. I liked, I liked the sound to it. I liked the beat to it. I liked the catchiness of it. Yeah. That's fair. Um, I got kind of like interested in what, like there was this part I wanted to quote, right? And there was no lyrics to copy and paste. Now I listen to it and I care a lot, but if I can copy and paste, it's just less effort on my end. So I started writing it out and then I felt bad and I said, well, fuck it. I'll just write out the whole song. And it, ta it takes a while. It takes a good 20 to 25 minutes to like write out the lyrics to one of these songs going back. You got to give some love to those lyric writers. I know I appreciate them more now. Thank you, people who write lyrics. Um, but yeah, I'm hella sick of pretending like I just don't uh, like I just don't want to end it. If I can finish the pain without feeling the same, I take a gun out the range and put that shit to my brain and bang. I grew up on the Bible, but I don't want to lie, though. I'm feeling so suicidal. And I'm just like, yeah, I wanted to quote that. That is some powerful shit right there. Um, the fact that he really is is tapping into some of his harsher feelings, the the part where he's really trying to cope with almost being alive Um how, like, if there wasn't shame associated with it, he really would blow his fucking brains out. But due to his religious backgrounds, he's feeling shitty. But, like, he doesn't want to lie. But he's feeling suicidal. And I can get where he's coming from. There are many days, unfortunately, where you where I might wake up. And, and those that idea is a little more relatable than other people may even be aware of. Because sometimes life is challenging. And, and it looks rosy and shit. And it's just not. And so that, like, hit me right in the feels. Um... But it's the second verse where it kind of gets cool, you know, like, because now once upon a time in a land with no reception, I came across a wire. Then I made my connection. I got in tune with myself, baptized underneath the full moon for my health. If wealth is there, I think this this part I wasn't sure. I, I, I wrote it from what I heard. So whatever. If wealth is there in spirit, in poverty of the pocket, all I ask is you pay attention and I'm a rocket. And I was like, damn, like, like he under he kind of like detached from the world for a minute. 
disconnected in a sense, went back to the pureness of everything and realized that in his brokenness, let's say, in his non-success, he found true wealth and whatnot. Um, and all he really wants is a bit of your attention, a bit of your, your time of day almost. Like, I also like to play me for your friends and I'm probably too advanced for them. Here's to the underground, call it noise canceling. I had to respond a little bit and say that it's not true. Merz is not too complicated for people. He He's pretty straightforward. In fact, he might be one of the least advanced in terms of playing for friends. Like, people might not understand why Merz is rapping about what he's rapping about, but damn, is he straightforward and easy to understand. So I'd say he's so advanced, he's easy to understand. That's cool. It's like a compliment in a sense. But I do like the part that he, like, he is connected to the underground. He was involved in that festival where he, like, apparently mm. put like K-Dot on the map or on that festival before he was famous, a bunch of other shit. So I respect Merz's legacy and where he's at and and I get where he comes from. So I don't hate that at all, really. I just thought it was funny because I think the way he sees himself and the way I see him are not the same, which is which is interesting. Um, I gave it a four on five. It's an okay song. Um, but the next one is uh, So Close, So Far. Uh, but we liking that connection. We make up and keep it going. Every now Okay, next song. I didn't write the lyrics. Somebody else did. That person's awesome. Um, I like this. I like uh, Merz's interpretation of a relationship, uh, his interpretation of love, uh, explaining how in situations uh, with a partner you have to you have to compromise and uh, figure out ways to make it work because you're working as a team. Um, <clears throat> and it's I, I I like the part where he's also apologizing. Uh, for not fe for feeling like he's not been a better man, he's not been around. Uh, there is a part where he his his girlfriend at the time or his wife at the time caught him uh, trying to talk to other women with his cell phone on his social media. Uh, but then uh, a couple like a couple uh, seconds after throughout the song, they end up like spreading their like um, they're at a wedding, like they're getting married and they're both saying like I do, like do you, do you take this one? Do you take that one? Um, and it's it's really just a nice a nice song about how uh they they they've kind of stuck together and they've they've worked through a lot of their things and I appreciate what Merz is doing um in terms of keeping it like 100% happiness uh with his wife and trying to make sure that like everything is still good um I gave it a 4 on 5 yeah, it's it's sweet. Um, there's a few of these songs that he's clearly inspired by his woman and his his, his love for her. Um, but it's really honest, right? Like, why would, why would I hold a grudge against you or even pretend to? I know it hurts your feelings, but it's not like I'm meant to. Why would I offend you? You're the one that I'm into. A queen so complex, a king so simple. Two different types of affection. Like, stay pulling us in different directions. Share the same roof, but we lose in affection. Same Wi-Fi, but we lack in that connection. And it's just like, you know, once you move in with a lady, don't tell Bonnie, it gets a little more challenging to, to be in that relationship and to maintain that same degree of romance and that same degree of attentiveness and everything. And uh, so as he's, as he's going through here, the first thing that you can get the sense is he's very reflective and he's taking the time to consider the different actions and he sees maybe how she perceives him in a certain way and he mm. starts it like listen why would i hold a grudge against you like she may have said that to him in the past mm. and then he kind of goes through and he almost points it out like she's amazing and complex and, and great and he's kind of so simple and whatever but at, because of that they almost have their own little disconnect and as bonnie likes to say boys are dumb and uh, we don't necessarily have the same level of complexity as women. And um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just saying I can relate to where he's coming from. Um, something else I really like struck me is and he's like, best friends still need to check in. And when I don't ask you about your data, it's disrespecting. And I'm fucking guilty of that. I barely remember to ask people about their days. Chris will walk in. I don't even say hi sometimes. He'll like look at me. And I do it a little bit, a little bit to fuck with him because it's fun. Mostly I do it to fuck with him because it's fun. But, like, he'll come in and I'll just, like, stare at my computer, turn to him after, like, eight minutes and just say something random. And he'll be like, what the fuck? Because it's just, you know, but, like, when it's with the person you're in love with and shit, you're supposed to ask them about their day and care. And, and it was an interesting takeaway. Um, 
I see you every day, but I don't tell you uh, all the time. Sometimes you need to dist to distinguish to divine. You need to you need that perspective. Our love is too pure for contraceptives. Remember when I texted that shit? Two weeks later, you was pregnant as shit, <laughs> and he was like just giving her lines and whatnot, like. You know, some distance happens, you want her, and he's like, yo, we don't need to wear a condom. Our love is pure. Life is good. Oh, our love is pregnant. And I, I, I thought it was just kind of funny the way he did that. Like, you can tell Merz is a bit of a joker when it comes to his woman, and they have their own little relationship and their own little style, and I like that. I give it a 4.25. It's a sweet song. It was uh, This one felt a little more like it belonged on the album than maybe some of the other ones, and for that, there's a reason to celebrate. Celebrate the memories. You can't replace the energy. Talk about IQ scores. I was writing out the lyrics to celebrate because they weren't there when I was reviewing. So right. I started going. I'm about halfway through the song. I hit update. And then the fine folk at Genius are like, you got 40 IQ points for giving us lyrics. And I was like, Heck yeah. Why didn't I get it for the other song? But it's because somebody left one sentence and snagged those points. So there are people who go on Genius and leave one sentence, get the IQ points, and make other people do the rest of the work. That is not cool, people who do that. Be that as it may, I got points for this one. It was nice. So I wrote out lyrics, and I'm pretty sure it was after Chris did his review. Go, Chris. Talk to us about your... Go on. Continue. You've already started. Um, <laughs> I didn't know the chorus was the chorus until after I finished writing out the first verse. So I felt like the chorus was a little non-distinct. Um, but it was okay. It was, it was all right. Um, I like this, the first verse. He's like, I got a red line BMX, saved up six months for them to see me flex. My boy is on a block, gave me my respect. Like, yeah, he did it. He got the fancy things. But what he really hoped for was sex because he bought the fancy things to get laid. Um, a bad brown babe named Deanna had the keys to the boy's heart, played them like pianos or pianos. Lazy. Lazy, okay? I didn't like that line. Um, hotter than a Roman candle with her sheer sundresses and her open toe sandals, queen of the school in her PE shorts. Life goal is making out by the handball courts. And then um, she finds that he deals pot and is like, uh, I'll fuck you for pot or something. And he's like, no, I want to love you. So meet me at the park and we'll share a, a dime bag. And he fell in love with her because she can roll joints and then he continues the story uh i'm not killing that's that's literally what he says yep, yep, yep. we used to skate the courthouse in west la weekends holidays almost every day i could i was from the hood but made that trip two hours back and forth that was my favorite shit no crips no bloods and no fake dogs just a bunch of skater kids smoking on great bud i sold drugs but had to plug on the music too and then he lists some chef and then apparently he was pimping out weed to jews and he was chilling there, and they reminded him that the Beastie Boys were dope. And then, yeah, so it's it's, it's a very aloof song to me. Um, it kind of has a, a more reminiscent tone. I don't know if I would say celebrate is, is well, it, it was a, I mean, I know what the- He's initially like celebrating the old memories that he has that's led him up to this point. Now, a lot of the song also has based around how he met this girl, which I'm assuming is either the first wife or the second wife or right. however it went. And it's it's basically, you get a, like a little insight from Merz's past about, you know, when he was growing up. And it, it, it shows, it shows that, like everyone else, he's normal, you know, like, uh, me, I had, I had this, uh, I had this phase where I thought having like the coolest thing or the nicest, uh, the nicest bike or the nicest skateboard or this would get me quote unquote late or at least looked at, you know? Yeah. Depending uh, on what it is, it might be true. Right. So I, I, you could see that he was there at that phase and then he grew up, but then, but he realized like, she's not really into like, you know, the car, she's more into the drugs and that's a different game. That's a different stuff. That's a different like lane. So he's just, I think Merz is just kind of celebrating with the homies and he's just like, remember when we used to do all this dumb shit? Remember when I did that? And look where we're yeah. at now. Whatever. Four on five. I gave it a four on five. <clears throat> All right, uh, Vows is another song on the album. Will you marry me? Not you, Chris. Not anyone, really. Wow. It just was related to Vows. Pisces, I went back and forth. You were Sagittarius, connected at the source. I was married in the... Somebody else wrote out these lyrics. It wasn't me. Okay, go on. So Vows um, is a slow, romantic, melodic song. Uh, I like I like the intro. It has like this type of... This, this, this kind of like clapping, snapping sound. 
uh, while you, you get into like this this vibe of like they're standing at the altar and they're saying their vows to each other. Um, Murs is expressing how he was strictly told she didn't that that the girl he's about to marry does not want some average card. She wants something spectacular. Um, and I like I like when he uh, in verse uh, one part in verse one he goes, but we finally made peace now. I'm hope uh, I'm hopeful because I ain't got no time for a loco. I take that back because I'm crazy about you. That's why we exchange in vows and saying I do, and. You know, it's 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 another one of these like he acknowledges and he appreciates her and he's also laying down the truth and honesty about it. Um, the rest of the song is basically kind of like gassing her up a little bit too. Like you hold me down, you're the seed to this. You make sure the seed uh, parts about a baby. You put a baby in her, right? He um, says you put the um, seed in the hole and the hole in the ground. The green grass grows and the belly gets round. And I found the apples not far from the tree. If we have another son, I hope he looks like me. Right. Yeah. So it's a very uh, family oriented song. I didn't gather much from it. I thought that it was cute. I thought that there's kind of like fucking um, low. No, what was it? So close, so far part two. Right. So I gave it a four on five. Go on. Yeah, um, he met her on the road in a small town. Who'd have thought we'd be at where we are now? I never thought I'd be the type to find romance. Back in the day, I was a Judy who had no chance. Girls in the school used to say no to the slow dance. Dream was to find a girl like you so we could hold hands. And now we standing at the altar, quite a rocky road just to get to this part, huh? And I, it's cute. Like, in high school, he was kind of lame. Things weren't going good. He never thought he was going to get the girl. And then he met this girl, in a, in apparently at a at a show in a small town, and now they're getting married. So that's kind of where we're at. Just a small town girl. <laughs> anyway, um, and then I think uh, my favorite part is when he goes, and if it if I say it's more than physical, lie like I don't love it when I'm sticking my dick in you. Love it. Just the tip. Just the tip. Love it. Love it, love it. Um, <laughs> you might make an honest man out of crip. Because that's part of it. Bonnie hates when I say some shit like that. But part of the relationship is you're supposed to want to stick your dick in the girl a little bit. Like, if you're with her, she now becomes the one that you're supposed to want to plow. So, like, when you had the crazy porn fantasies, that's the girl you're supposed to want to do it with. And all those rules, right? So, the fact that he's just up front, that this is the girl that went from just the tip, just the tip into something more, I respect that. I like the fact that he wants to fuck his girl. It just makes total sense to me. Um, I hope Bonnie doesn't watch this one. And, um, yeah, so it's about to be the very last time I commit. I'm going down with the ship. So if you ever try to leave me, you'll be one dead bitch. And then he's like, JK, JK. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I was just on your side. And then he said some whatever. But then he points out that's the kind of humor they have. And she'd find that funny. And who am I to judge that? You know? And so I really appreciate the love that he's putting forth. And then there's the part where he has the baby at the end and whatever. Or puts the seed in her. And just, I guess, I don't know. It must be kind of fucked up to watch your girlfriend get pregnant, go through that whole process only to... And so tragically as it did, but the song is sweet as fuck with like the wedding vows at the chorus and stuff. And I think there needs to be more music like this. So even if it's not my cup of tea, I think it's just because I'm not used to it. Like I realize we don't have a lot of honest love songs like this out there. They're not popularized. They're not the style. And so it's, it's good to hear it. It really made me happy. So 4.25. Um, next, let's talk about how God is the greatest. Down with my murderous melodies Say they run the city but they know they can't fade us I wrote out all the verses to this song And then when I hit save on the lyrics I, By wrote out I mean I wrote out hit, For those who just got here because this is the last song I mean on Genius.com I, I filled out the lyrics for like two and a half songs I filled out the whole thing for this But uh, after my third verse didn't get saved I said fuck that I'm not doing it a second time So I only ended up putting the hook in two verses of this song on here um, so yeah, that, that was my, my story on genius. I earned 80 IQ points today. I felt very proud of myself. I'm Do you guys you. use genius? Are you guys on there? Anyway, go on, Chris. Um, 
Well, I don't really have much to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> Only because the lyrics were up. I had it written about yet. It's not even about the lyrics going up. You, you, I like you even notified me after you were you were letting me know like you were starting to write the lyrics. So <laughs> I went back and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go read these now. Um, but there wasn't much for me to quote from this. It's it's honestly, and it's a great song. It's powerful. It's energetic. He's he's happy. He's got that. He's got that vibe. He's he's, he's lit up. But he just appreciates God, and and it's and it's one of those songs where he's appreciating God and thanking God for giving him what he's got today and helping him through the struggle and guiding him. And and as much as I appreciate that type of loyalty to god uh, i i think just not my this song is him being like hard bars attacking people dude like listen oh my god look at the frauds claiming that they goons and what they do for the squad fingers on triggers that never go bang gang 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 like it's a little bit more attacking people a little bit shh that careful because the feds watch crazy when my meds stop my racing like satan's got me in a headlock meet me in the moment and i might lick your head top dreadlocks 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 falling down can't nobody calm me down used to be hype shit lit is what they call it now conscious was underground guess we turned it around burn it down burn it anyway so that's kind of more what the song feels like and he's kind of taking shots at some stuff and he's a little bit more of an aggressive high pump type like high like pumped up type feel to it and he's coming in and then on the chorus he kind of has some homage of thanking god and responding a little bit like he's almost praying but like it and almost like a parenthesis kind of way he's responding with like his inner thoughts to it i thought it was a short concise punch in really powerful cool way to end the album it's it's almost like like everything he wanted to say on this album in terms of like the points he wanted to make slammed into like this one hard hitting God is great, but fuck all y'all is more what I would say this song kind of tries to convey. I gave it a four and a half on five. I thought it was pretty fun. And as much as the part where he repeats himself can sometimes feel a little bit annoying, it was really clever writing. And I can't say I've seen a lot of people do it with the same style that Murs did. So good on you, buddy. All right, Chris. Now, how did you feel? The album got a three point nine. What the album? No, I mean about this song. I I told I don't have much to say about the song. Did you give the song? I gave the song a four. That's I gave it. the song a four because I enjoyed it. I gave the song the four because I enjoyed the energy of it, the 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 vibe to it. I just I didn't quite get that it was more of like attacking people. I thought he was just Chris more or less judged like, a book by its cover. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let, let, let's wrap up then. We'll talk about <laughs> the album. I gave it a 4.265. Hmm. Um, it's a classic in the sense to me of this is one of those personal albums. And it's a really good personal album. Is it really a classic four, album? Four. I don't know. But it's a really strong, personal, necessary album for the landscape of music where it is it can't all be a certain thing and i think what mers brings to the table is this genuine positivity that other people want to convey but mers lives the life he is he's proud of who he's been his whole life and the demons he struggles with and it's a really introspective way to look at some of his his happinesses and his sadnesses i mean the sound melancholy just hits like a fucking hammer um i i really dig this album i could see myself like going back to it in a certain mood because if you're in a good mood this shit might make you feel fucking sad but it also might not. So I don't know. Let me know. Let me know the mood you're in when you perceive this album and the kind of impact it had on you. For me, I was feeling melancholy, so the album fit real snug. Well, actually, just to bring that one more further, let us know if you have to be in a certain mood to for any album, or do you feel like music in general can just help you in, in any state that you're in? Um, for the album itself, I did give it a 3.9. Um, I like Murs. I like his talent. He's very diverse. He knows how to control and project these, these and present these really great songs. The only thing is I think that it was just the vibe of this entire album. Um, it's very consistent, but I just didn't vibe with it the entire way through. That, so That's fine. 
Um, so yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys think about it because it's super important. Thank you so much for watching this and being here with us. It, it always means the world to know that you you folk come back if you're just discovering us that you actually sat through this and watched this, even if it was for five minutes. That's still five minutes of your life that is crazy to know that you spent with us. Um, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content. Let us know what you want to see us covering. And if you do leave a comment, you enter the contest where you might win some Amazon money. And that will happen once we break past 1,000 subscribers. So please help us, and we are happy to help you. On that note, we'll catch you next week. We'll have another review ready. Something else will come out. We'll talk about it. Don't forget, you can always hit us up and talk to us on all of our other social media pages that are linked down below. And yeah, for for old time's sake, if you tweet Chris, we'll <laughs> read it on the podcast. We tried that for like two months. Nobody did it. Nobody tweeted it's Chris. Okay. I have no friends. At Chromatopia. Sorry. Let's say at Chromatopia. At, at Chris Chrome ninety three. At Chris Chrome ninety three. Yep. And it says Chromatopia. Just yep. give him a little tweet and he'll read it next time. Have a good night, everyone. Take it easy, guys.